Hi there, and welcome to an introductory webinar on managing teaching collections in Arctos. My name is Anna Chin, and I'm the Assistant Collections Manager at the Chicago Academy of Sciences and Peggy Notabart Nature Museum. And today I'm going to be giving you a little tour of how we use Arctos to manage our teaching collection data and how we make these data accessible to the people who use it. Teaching collections come in many different shapes and sizes depending on the type of institution as well as on the purpose and scope of the collection itself. Um, here at the Academy, the Collections Department has been formalizing a teaching collection for use primarily by our in-house educators and public program staff for about 10 years now. And in 2016, we were about a year into using Arctos as our primary collections management system for our research collection when we realized that managing the teaching collection would be a lot easier if we were using one coherent system for all of our collections management. Um, so, since then, we've embarked on a journey of cataloging the entirety of our teaching collection, um, and out of our 77,000 records that we have on Arctos today, just over 2,000 of those specimens are designated as teaching collection specimens. Um, so, today in the webinar, I'm going to first walk you through how Arctos facilitates um, our collection management specifically, and then second, I'll talk about how we make our teaching specimens accessible to non-academic users. So one of the big benefits of having our teaching collection formally documented and cataloged in Arctos um, is how we've been able to make use of all of the same Arctos infrastructure uh, that supports our research collection management. Um, in the long run, this kind of strategic digital management has helped us keep track of the collection and ultimately will make sure that our teaching materials are thoroughly used and will also last as long as they possibly can. Arctos has a specific collection prefix that uh, designates teaching collections as teaching collections um, and makes these collections administratively distinct from other discipline specific collection types. Um, so if we go up here into collection, you can see the list of our discipline specific collections. And then at the very bottom, we have our teaching collection. Um, and Teaching collections are meant to be this multidisciplinary collection type in Arctos, which means I can catalog any specimen or object I could possibly imagine across all biological disciplines, um, geology, fossils, cultural material, and art. Um, if you can imagine it, you can catalog it as a teaching collection specimen. So to give you an idea of the breadth of our teaching collection, um, I'm going to click here to search within our teaching collection, and I want to view my search results as a catalog record summary, and I'm going to group it by kingdom and class. And I'll hit enter to return all of our teaching specimens. And I'll sort this by number of specimens. And you can really quickly see that a plurality, about half of our um, teaching specimens are insects, but we also have mammals and birds and reptiles, um, a few different uh, plant classes, um, some mollusks here. So it really is very multidisciplinary. Um, I'm going to click into my first teaching uh, specimen record just to give you a sense that like all of our uh, research, Arctos research specimen records um, or catalog records, uh, we have exactly the same display for uh, teaching uh, catalog records. We have identifications, our um, spatial temporal data, collector data, different parts, uh, remarks, identifiers, um, it looks exactly the same. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to catalog numbers um, just briefly. Um, and show that Arctos catalog numbering systems are really flexible. Um, typically, a lot of uh, natural history collections will catalog um, using just an integer format, but Arctos can accommodate a really flexible catalog numbering system um, that allows you to use prefixes and any combination of alphanumeric characters. So if your collection is currently cataloged using specific teaching collection prefixes, this is totally allowable under existing Arctos rules. Um, I've also brought up a second um, specimen record here um, at Ruby Throated Hummingbird because I think that um, the situation for this specimen um, is relevant to a lot of uh, 
uh, different collections that might be interested in um, specifically formalizing a teaching collection on their on Arctos. Um, so this specimen record was first migrated into Arctos in 2016 and was managed uh, within the bird collection until 2019 um, when we decided we want to uh, transfer it into the teaching collection. And so for three years, this record had been managed as if it were part of our research collection. Um, and so we would um, included it in loans. Um, there's all sorts of history associated with um, collecting events and localities um, that we wouldn't want to lose just by duplicating um, this record into the teaching collection um, and then deleting the original bird record. So what we wound up doing was we duplicated all of this information into a new teaching collection record, but then we created a, a relationship between these two records. Um, and so relationships, if you don't automatically see them um, on your specimen, um, sorry, catalog record page, uh, you'll find them under identifiers. So I'll hit edit either here or under other IDs. And then I can choose uh, from all of my other identifier um, uh, types, include the catalog number, and then relate it using this relationship feature. And so there are lots of different ways that two uh, catalog records can be related um, that define specific um, kinds of relationships between two individual animals eaten by a host of, but this particular kind of relationship is same individual as, which tells us that uh, two catalog items are the same biological individual. So these two bits of data refer to the same individual organism. And by when I save my changes, um, Arctos will automatically create a link between this particular bird record and my new recatalogued teaching record. And you can see that these two records are identical in every way, um, except for, for example, the loan history. Um, and so this way I can maintain um, both this new record as a teaching record and all of the data associated with this old bird record. Um, I can use encumbrances, uh, to conceal this bird record from the public so that only the teaching record is visible. Um, but uh, I, as a, a collection manager for this particular Arctos collection, can have access to all the data history. So back in my teaching uh, collection record, um, I'll go into my loans right here. Um, and we document loans here at the Chicago Academy of Sciences um, exactly uh, identically for both our teaching collection material and our research collection, collection material. Um, tracking our teaching collection use is really valuable from um, a metrics and reporting standpoint um, because it helps us better understand how our educators are using uh, the teaching collection and how best we can build the collection to support their needs. Um, and we've also found that maintaining equivalent documentation for um, internal teaching collection use has made our lives a lot easier. Um, just because a lot of the time we'll get repeat requests for the same specimens um, for similar kinds of programs that our educators will run kind of periodically throughout the year. And so without any kind of documentation or cataloging system, the only way to find specimens over and over again is to rely on your memory. Um, and you'll wind up doing the same work over and over and over again to find um, exactly the same specimens, um, which is uh, totally unnecessary effort. So documenting our, our uh, collection use for our teaching collection really formally, um, using uh, the Arctos uh, loan module, um, not only allows me to define uh, people who are involved in the loan, um, I can describe my loan, include specific instructions, but it also allows me to really easily go back to um, my loan materials again and again and easily generate kind of an inventory list. So I'm going to click into review loan items and you can see this really quickly brings up um, all of the specimens that were included uh, in the loan, including my 
uh, ruby-throated hummingbird that was originally a bird specimen or a bird ornithology collection specimen. And so using our formalized loan structure from here, I can update individual specimen condition um, to document if there was any change in condition during a particular program, um, which allows me to uh, make sure that our specimens last as long as possible while still uh, being used as they're meant to be used uh, as teaching specimens. I'll go back to my loan page here. And over here on the right hand side, you can see that this loan is actually part of um, a project. Um, Projects are a really interesting module that allow Arctos users to aggregate um, different kinds of um, Arctos data all into um, one nicely packaged um, uh, module. So here I've used, I've set up a project that is meant to help me collate and document the relationship between the collection and education departments. Um, so uh, this particular project, um, I, I wanted to be able to assemble all of our teaching collection use by the education department, all of the specimens that um, education programs have collected over time, and be able to navigate to all these things um, in one um, easy to find place. So when I scroll down, you can see I've added all of our um, teaching collection loans to um, the project itself so that I can find them all in one place. And to do this, it's as easy as clicking Add Loan. If I know my loan number to add, I can search using that. And just hitting Add to Project. And here we go, there it is at the bottom right there. And then when I go to my project detail page, this is a really uh, simple way to visualize just how much your teaching collection is being used by the education department, for example. Um, and you can see that the education department doesn't just use our teaching collection, um, different programs might call for use of uh, our research specimens, depending on what kind of program it is. Um, you can also see that the, the education department um, programs have actually generated specimens, um, and there are other associated projects um, that use the same specimens uh, that this project uses. So this is a really awesome landing page. Um, this particular landing page is visible to the public, so you can really readily um, share this URL with administration, for example, when you're doing reporting and metrics and just show how um, valuable this relationship is uh, and how useful uh, your teaching collection um, is to in interdepartmentally. So I'll go back to the loan right here. Um, another critical part of our loan process uh, that's facilitated by ARCDOS um, is just tracking um, our loan uh, use, our, our collection use, um, and we do this using um, a loan header page, so this is kind of like a cover letter for our loan, but also um, inventory sheets. And these can be generated using the ARCTOS reporting and labeling functions. Um, so I'll just go back there and just make it really clear. Um, I'm going under print, print any report, and it'll bring me automatically to this reporting um, landing page. Um, there is an entire Arctos webinar specifically on Arctos reports and labels, so I won't go into the nitty gritty on how to create these kinds of things, but um, we have preset a certain um, number of loan reports that I can access from my edit loan page. So I'll go to print, and if I want to generate an inventory, for example, this inventory is really useful 
um, not only for me, so that I can go and return um, specimens to the correct location, but also potentially really useful for our educators. Um, these are all specimens that are located um, at the museum, not at our off-site storage facility, so the educators can actually go use our inventory sheet and go and access um, storage themselves without our help. So it really clearly defines what exact catalog numbers they're looking for, um, both the scientific name and a common name, um, as well as the storage location and condition of um, the loan items. The report uh, printer functionality, I think, can also be really readily worked into um, a more systematic um, workflow of cataloging and digitizing your teaching collection. Um, I'll demonstrate how you could possibly use the um, report generation system um, if you're newly digitizing your teaching collection. So I'm going to go into search. Once you've really decided that you want to formalize your teaching collection, um, you have to make sure that you'll actually be able to find everything that you catalog um, so that the collection can actually be usable in real life. Um, over the course of our cataloging um, of the teaching collection, we've had to curate a lot of boxes with, that don't have labels or catalog numbers. Um, and to get our material into Arctos, we had to assign everything a catalog number, then apply labels that um, allow us to match um, what's physically in reality uh, to whatever is in the database. Um, this can be really time consuming if you're having to draft up thousands of labels by hand. And the awesome thing is that using that same report and label functionality um, that I just showed uh, with the loan inventory, um, Arctos can automatically do all of this for you if you're really strategic in how you um, uh, build your workflow. So say I want to go and label all of the teaching specimens that I've entered this year. It's that time of the year. Um, I'll go into teaching specimens and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the search page into the curatorial pane. I want to find all the specimens that I entered from this year, so at the beginning of the year until today. Hit search. And this will bring up all eight uh, specimens that I entered this year, or teaching specimens at least. And so then I can find my reports under manage, print any report. And then we have a specific uh, label that we use for our teaching collection specimens called CHAS label adhesive report. And this label um, we designed specifically uh, to, as a template that can um, generate a PDF that will pr print directly onto 1 by 1.5 foil back adhesive labels. Um, so this just includes a really simple catalog number, um, a, a scientific name, and then common name if there is one. Um, which are all key pieces of information that can make our specimens more findable for our educators. Um, and so this is a really easy way for us to just quickly print off labels using what's already in Arctos and stick them on to specimens as we go. So next I'm going to share a little bit more about how we are able to share our data directly with collection users. Um, and for our teaching collection, this is primarily our education and public program staff. Um, we've really been trying hard to develop easy ways to make the database more accessible to people who don't use Arctos today. Um, and if you're a current Arctos user, you know that our user interface is built mostly for flexibility in collections management um, and not really for casual browsing. Um, and for folks who are less familiar with Arctos as a platform, it can be really daunting to navigate. If I go back to my specimen search, there are a lot of different options just to uh, parse through to figure out how you go about finding exactly what you need. So for four, uh, we're hoping that in the future we can continue to 
um, develop a more intuitive search and display interface um, as a community, an Arctos community. But for now, uh, working with what we got. Um, so for us, um, if we want to make our specimens usable for our museum educators, uh, we have to uh, build really easy ways um, to allow people to find specimens um, without too much effort. Our educators are really smart people, um, but they don't have a ton of time to learn the ins and outs of Arctos. Uh, so we're trying to do the heavy lifting for them and build the tools that they uh, need to be set up for success. And then of course we provide them with periodic training on how to browse Arctos most effectively um, so they can both find what they need and then better communicate to us about uh, what it is that they want. So when our educators are looking for specimens, the first thing that we direct them to um, is this search by common name. Um, I think that that's kind of how most people think more intuit or intuitively about um, plants and animals when they're uh, uh, in a non-academic setting. Um, and this can be a really useful tool, especially for those very common local and charismatic species that our educators are most likely to teach about. Um, because those are the taxa that are most likely to have common names um, in Arctos already. So for example, um, I would tell them to first start by limiting their search by teaching specimens, and then go to common names, say they're looking for a coyote, just type in coyote, hit search, and it'll bring up all of our teaching specimens with the common name coyote. And so this works for the most part. You can see here that we've actually brought up um, an American badger um, in with our coyote search. And when I go into this particular record, you can see that this is because there is a common name um, in uh, Spanish that includes the word coyote. So um, Arctos's search features, um, its smart search features have uh, recognized this as potentially what I was interested in um, searching for. So you can see already that this kind of common name search has its limitations. Um, it works really well for simple common names like coyote, but breaks down when uh, your common names are more complex. So for example, um, if I'm searching for dark-eyed junco, I won't come up with anything, and so it'll, even though I, I think I've um, searched in the correct way, um, I don't see anything um, in the teaching collection uh, with the common name Dark Eyed Junko. And this is just because I have forgotten to hyphenate. When I search now with the hyphen, it brings up two specimens. So you can see how this search functionality, um, it's not a fuzzy search tool like Google that'll interpret an input that's been misspelled. Um, things have to be spelled um, exactly the way that they uh, have been input into Arctos, um, otherwise the search won't work. So this can be a kind of a hang up, I think, for some folks who want to be able to search um, terms like uh, mussel or warbler or plant even. Um, it can be really challenging to search just using common name. So to as a solution for this, we've tried to come up with certain um, saved searches uh, that can make searching uh, a little bit easier for uh, folks who uh, aren't Arctos super users. So saved searches you can find by navigating to My Stuff, Saved Searches. And these are uh, queries that I've saved to URLs um, that can then be shared. So all of these URLs with teach um, are saved searches that I've put together and then shared with our education department so that they can more readily find what they need. So when I say open up saved slash teach amphibians, I'll go into my search results. You can see that it's as simple as um, uh, good prefix equals to CHAS teach class equals amphibia and it'll bring up all the amphibians that um, are available in our teaching collection. 
So I'll show you how to put these uh, set up save searches um, briefly. So first I have to go into search. Um, say I want to be able to share all of the specimens, all the mounted specimens um, in the teaching collection. So I'll narrow my search by teach. I'll scroll down to catalog record, part name. I want everything that includes the word mount. There are a lot of different ways that a specimen can be mounted, but I want them all. And hit enter. And you can see that we have 65 catalog records um, that are cataloged as mounted specimens. And if I scroll over a little bit, you can see parts. Most of these are just mounted skins. So some kind of display mount. And then to save this search, I'll go to Tools, Save Search, and I can give it some kind of unique identifier, that, like a randomly generated number, or I can um, choose a more human readable string. So I'm going to go teach mounts. Hit OK. It tells me that I successfully saved uh, the saved search. My stuff. Saved search. And then you can see right here, this is the URL that I would then share with um, any educators who are looking to um, browse through our mounted specimens. And once this is set up, I can send this URL to whomever, and when it's clicked, um, it'll tell ArcDOS to bring up the exact same SQL query that I used to bring up that original uh, specimen uh, results list. So this is a really dynamic tool that can make browsing uh, the collection a lot more dynamic and um, a lot easier. Um, all this said about searching, the, I think the most valuable thing that you can do to make your collection on Arctos more accessible to non-academic users um, is to document the collection using images. Um, photos not only allow you as a collection manager to document um, a specimen's condition, especially when it's really well used um, in programs, but also allows the educators to really quickly evaluate whether a specimen is useful for the program or lesson that they're organizing. Um, and so to demonstrate, uh, the power of this, I'll go to back to my search. Um, say I'm an educator who's looking for a Canada Goose mount for a program, um, and I've diligently gone to the Arctos training um, that the collection department provided. Um, I'll go to collection, limit my uh, search by teach. I'll use common name, Canada Goose. And then I'm interested in um, mounted specimen, I'll hit enter. And so just from my search results, I'll think that I've successfully found exactly what I wanted. Um, clicking into the record though, I'll see that this isn't just a mounted skin, a uh, whole mounted skin, this is actually several disarticulated appendages that have each been mounted separately. Um, and on my end as the collection manager, I know that the reason that this was done um, was because the specimen itself had already begun to um, degrade as the preparator was preparing it. So instead of tossing the whole thing, um, the preparator chose to mount each of the appendages separately. So this specimen could really be super useful for, for example, um, a lesson on the relationship between uh, morphology and behavior, but is a lot less useful for a lesson um, where the educator is just trying to show how big a Canada goose really is. Um, so this imaging project um, is really ongoing, um, and we're hoping that eventually we can adjust our workflows such that each new teaching specimen um, that comes into the collection gets imaged and photographed um, just at the same time that it's labeled so that everything in the collection can be more findable on the database and um, once it goes into the cabinets for the educators. Um, we kind of started this process um, by creating um, another project. So I'm gonna go into view details of this particular specimen media. Um, and you can see that each of these three 
uh, images are associated with a project called um, Chicago Academy of Sciences, Peggy Note of Art Nature Museum, Teaching Collection, Specimen Photography and Imaging. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. And this particular project is meant to aggregate all of the specimens that have already been imaged um, in the teaching collection in Arctos. And so my eventual hope is that this can be kind of a landing page for educators so they can just kind of really easily flip through a visual catalog of all the specimens that they have um, access to for their programs. Um, this is really just in um, first stages, uh, but I'm hoping that this can I can share this link uh, with our educators so that they can really quickly take a look, get inspired, um, and create new cool things with all of the material that we have available for them. And so to add links uh, from images to the project, um, I can either do that um, what, via bulk load, um, or I can go into edit media from any media um, detail page that I'm at. And adding uh, relationships to projects is under this uh, add relationship feature. And so I'll say associated with project. And then I can do a search by uh, project name. And so I'll click, I would click this and then hit save. I think that it'll throw an error though if I click it now because it already is related to that particular project. But after I add a relationship, I'll hit save edits um, and it'll automatically relate that image of the specimen to um, my imaging project. So in conclusion, um, I hope that this has given you some good ideas on how to use Arctos to kind of untangle the strange odds and ends that wind up uh, in teaching collections just because no one really knows quite what to do with them. Um, and I hope that you can really use these tools to make those odds and ends manageable and usable. Um, in my opinion, getting everything documented and findable is always the most important first step to getting a handle on what you have. Um, and making the collection usable to folks who are excited and interested um, in using it. In general, our thoughts on no data specimens here at Chicago Academy of Sciences is that everything has the potential to pique someone's interest and curiosity and creativity. Um, so we might as well put it out there and make it uh, available for people to take a look at, browse, use. And Arctos has made that process of making things accessible um, so much easier. So thanks for coming today and uh, listening to me and I hope that you have a great day.